Ladies and gentlemen, we want to begin uh, our agenda for the regular uh, special meeting of the Homelessness and Poverty Committee of the Los Angeles City Council. Uh, my name is Marquise Harris Dawson. I represent District 8 and uh, act as the chair of this committee. We're joined by uh, the vice chair, uh, Council Member Monica Rodriguez, and uh, members, Council Members Wissar and Bonin, uh, we've got a lot of speakers today, so we want to roll through um, as quickly as we can. We'll begin the meeting uh, with general public comment and people who are commenting on multiple items, uh, including but not limited to our last member, Council Member Curran Price. Um, so if I call you up, uh, you have two minutes to speak. Uh, you have one minute on whatever items you signed up for and an additional minute for general public comment. So I'll begin uh, that now if you quickly come to the podium at the, at the center of the room and uh, begin your comments. I have Caleb Havens, Jed Perriott, John Motter, Motter, Liz Hirsch. Thanks everybody. Uh, my dad says I'm wasting my time uh, talking to uh, politicians but and uh, people who kind of have their opinions already set, but I'd like to prove them wrong a little bit. Um, I want to make sure everybody here knows that not building homeless solutions costs more money down the road in both courtroom, jail fees, emergency services. Every community that studies this finds it. Um, every location has its own ups and downs, but the bottom line is we need to build 100,000 units of housing in 10 years before the Olympics gets here, or people are going to start disappearing in vans, just like they did in Rio, and then we'll never hear from them again. Um, I know that sometimes people have children that are being educated close by to some of these locations that we're going to talk about. Um, statistically, your kids are way more in danger from what's in your medicine cabinets than what they're going to find on the streets. Um, and I just want to hit the point home that people who are suffering from lack of housing because we're hoarding resources that could prevent that suffering uh, kind of makes us murderers if we can't figure out how to organize our resources better to take care of our neighbors who are most in need because of the systemic racial, religious, ethnic injustices that permeate our culture and that we haven't solved yet that result in homelessness. Uh, the number one cause of homelessness is eviction. It's not laziness and it's not addiction. It's people who can't find a place to live that they can afford and don't have power to have their basic needs met. So I hope that everybody who comments can keep compassion in mind and remember that uh, history always vindicates the person who makes the compassionate choice not the person who hoards resources until their neighbors die. Thanks. Thank you. Good afternoon. Oh. Good afternoon, Jed Perriott with the Democratic Socialists of America. Um, so we're here today to talk about potential locations for more temporary shelters uh, across the city. Uh, we need solutions. We need immediate solutions right now. We really need, uh, again, as I've said many times, permanent housing is the only solution to homelessness. Um, everybody in this room should be outraged that Triple H funding has now been cut in half uh, somehow. Uh, now projected 6,000 units of permanent supportive housing as opposed to 10,000. This is true. LA Times. Look at LA Times. 6,000 is what is now projected. And so, and so while we're now trying to hide that fact, uh, we are talking about these temporary shelters, and another fact you're trying to hide about the shelter plan is that there is uh, $29 million attached to the Bridge to Home plan for what you are calling cleanups in public, including uh, the mayor's west side rep in a meeting last week with a bunch of unhoused folks and myself. Uh, he said there were cleanups. We know what that means. It is more police and sanitation sweeps that harass and criminalize the unhoused. And this plan will disproportionately criminalize the unhoused more than it will shelter it. When you look at, for example, Koreatown, which has around 350 unhoused people, the proposed shelter there is going to have roughly 60 to 70 beds. Now think about all the other folks who are not gonna get a bed, right? Uh, about 290, what did they get in this plan? They get more police and more sanitation sweeps. How is that solving the problem? Just go and talk to the folks on the streets who have to deal with this harassment, where police officers literally 
call them names, throw out all their possessions via bulky item pickups, which are unnoticed, zero notice given, and they literally tell the homeless people that they're doing it to encourage them to change their lifestyle, to go to a shelter, a shelter that is temporary, a shelter that is not the solution at all, and a shelter that has strict rules and will kick them out back to the streets in no time. Thank you. This is out Thank you. I'm John Motter. I'm with Ground Game LA and DSA. Um, normally when I come here, I try and tell y'all um, the effects of sweeps and what's actually happening on the streets since, I mean, you're obviously not there when the sweeps are happening because we are and we never see you or your deputies. So here's what happens um, when you enforce 5611 in a near desert climate. This man in Boyle Heights uh, died of heat exhaustion during the heat wave. Uh, he was an elderly wheelchair bound man, uh, said he wanted help uh, getting off the street, um, but clearly there wasn't um, enough housing available and enough services available to him. Um, and we obviously don't want people having their tents up during the day. I say we, the city, certainly not me. Um, I don't even know where that came from, the fact that you can't have a tent up during the day. I mean, it's 100 plus degrees out and you can't seek shade. Where are you supposed to go? You're supposed to go to the cooling centers or something? Is lost to sending vans around, picking everybody up, taking them to the cooling center, making sure they aren't dying? I mean, like, this guy fucking died. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Liz Hirsch. Um, I am a resident of Hollywood, and I'm a mother and a teacher. Um, I'm a member of Democratic Socialists of America. Um, I, my sentiments, uh, I would say I largely agree with what's been said by the gentlemen who have spoken previous to me. Um, I, I wish at this meeting there were more council members. I frankly think it's interesting that the Homelessness and Poverty Committee is restricted to um, just a handful um, of you. But regardless, we're here today, finally, right? It's been months, right, since one of these meetings was convened, or maybe I, maybe I missed something. I try to keep uh, on top of this. Um, I do wish that Council Member Koretz was present um, today in particular, because I know that, you know, there's something in his district that's being planned, and that's good. That's good that there's some type of solution um, slated. Uh, it's not a, it's not an actual solution, right? As as has been said, it's not housing. Um, but the fact that you know, as as other council members do, he's in the process of obstructing proper housing being built. And I'm glad that lawsuit got filed last week against the city council for these pocket vetoes of. Uh, affordable housing and permanent supportive housing that uh, the voters, you know, have demanded that we um, that we address in this city. Um, sorry if I'm rambling. I don't feel well, and I'm I'm so angry. <laughs> but uh, I just want to say to Coretz, you know, what you did recently um, to our unhoused neighbors at Poinsettia, the kind of consistent harassment and intimidation that has gotten them to clear, that has separated from them from the caseworkers who knew them, who were trying to line them up with services and housing, the fact that none of us can find them um, at this point and they're totally on their own and isolated from one another is uh, no, no evidence of progress here and the criminalization that goes on and it just continues to be funded is an absolute shame. Thanks. Thank Hello, I'm Sister Grace and I'm new to LA, but I'm tell not me, new. Tell me your name. My name is Sister Grace. You're not a speaker. I put it on the thing. So you have to take your seat, and we'll, we'll try to figure it out. But thank you. I have David, uh, David Quattro. David, I'm sorry, I'm mispronouncing your name. David Quattrochi. That's you? My apologies. I'm sure that that was not a correct pronunciation. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, it's David Quattrochi. I'm here as a member of the Democratic Socialists of America and in solidarity with the unhoused citizens. Um, 
So uh, in general too, I'm here to speak against the $29 million allocated. Uh, we see that you've bumped up 30 million uh, for shelters to, to show on record. I'm worried that the president uh, being said is always kind of doing the minimum or enough on paper to make it look good. Um, we've seen what police do out on the, the homeless beat. Uh, it's, it's, it's a mismatch in terms of like skills and things that they're, they've been trained to do and what actually needs to be done. Uh, so if, if anything, this is perpetuating more violence and more criminalization. Um, you've heard this, the stats, the number one reason is eviction. I think in this room we have to start believing that and uh, comprehensive shelter plans are fine in the, are fine in the meantime, but I, I'd, I'd never saw any kind of like robust uh, asking of our unhoused population if that is a good solution. We need to stop assuming we know the, the, the reality and uh, what our citizens are dealing with on a, a daily aspect. Um, also, there's a quote in the LA Times from our Deputy Chief of Staff for Garcetti about working with a council office on a daily basis, but working with the private sector as well. We've had some pretty incompetent report backs, even from sanitation. I think servicing it out to the private sector is pretty damaging. That's like some forethought that I know you all know, but let's keep it in Thank mind. Thank you. And all right, uh, that closes uh, general public comment. Um, we, and we are, we won't be taking any more speakers uh, for items. Uh, so we will begin our meeting. I know we have uh, a number of speakers on item number one. Uh, items number one, two, three, and four have a number of speakers on them. We're going to try to get uh, two of the issues out of the way uh, be and begin the meeting with six. Item number six, uh, get that done, and then we can um, give... Uh, have an ample time for the hearing uh, for items one, two, and three. So if we could begin the, the meeting by reading item number six uh, into the uh, agenda, and as uh, that's being read, if the folks from uh, Board of Public Works and Hunters Point can come forward. Item six is a Board of Public Works report relative to the personal service contract amendment with Hunter's Point family for a bathroom attendant and monitoring services for the mobile pit stop program. Thank you. Proceed. Good afternoon. Mr. Chair, Council Members, Raul Mendoza here with the Board of Public Works and I'm joined at the table. Uh, Elise Matson, CAO. And we also have uh, some of our partners on this program. Lena Miller, Executive Director of the Hunters Point family. Um, Dave Bates from Five, Five Keys Schools and Programs and one of the ambassadors working on the program, uh, Mr. Edward Jenkins. Uh, I'll just go briefly into this. Uh, we're here today providing an update on the mobile pit stop pilot program. Uh, also requesting approval to continue the program and extend our contract with Hunters Point family for one additional year. Uh, this program actually started with a motion introduced by Council Member Bonin, um, and it was adopted by your committee back in October 2017 in response to the hepatitis A virus outbreak. Um, the motion directed the CAO to report on how to increase access to public restrooms and explore the concept of a mobile pit stop pilot program modeled after a similar program that was done in the city of San Francisco. So. The idea was not only to increase access, but also to ensure that the locations were safe and sanitary. And we could do that by staffing those locations with a bathroom attendant, or like we like to call them an ambassador. Um, in December 2017, the CAO reported back to this committee uh, with how this program could be rolled out, involving our office and the Board of Public Works, as well as the CAO's office. And they analyzed county public health data on the best locations to see where the biggest need was for this type of program. Uh, from there, our office and the CAO, we executed a contract with Hunters Point family for six months. Um, they're the provider that 
uh, worked on the program and began the program in San Francisco, and they're bringing their experience here to LA on how we can be successful. They've subcontracted with Five Keys, who I mentioned, um, a, local, a more local nonprofit who hired and trained the ambassadors who are working on the program. Uh, we also couldn't do this without other city departments who are involved, uh, Department of Transportation with some of the parking. Um, we worked with the Department of General Services on the rental of the portable toilets, and Adele and his staff uh, from the Bureau of Sanitation as it relates to some of the trash pickup as well as the needle collection that uh, was part of the program. Um, so less than three months after that motion was adopted, uh, we got the program launched in March. Uh, it's, um, we now have a total of eight locations where we're doing this, um, but I'll turn it over to Elise Madsen of the CAO's office to talk a little bit more about the results and the data that's come about from this. Thanks, Raul. So the pit stop program is divided into two components that have a total of eight locations that Mike Raul was referencing. First, we have pit stop attendants staffing three of the automatic public toilets, the permanent public toilets operated by JC Deco. Um, and we have five mobile restroom sites that are composed of attendants and mobile restrooms that are delivered and picked up every day. Uh, we chose the eight sites, like Raul said, by working with council office field staff to identify the best location within the hepatitis A hotspot areas, as identified in our first report. Uh, attendants are responsible for enforcing courtesy rules, such as time limits and keeping the units and the surrounding area clean. The pit stops are operational from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. daily, with the exception of our newly opened Venice site, which is open overnight between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. The usage data that we have seen after the first several months of the pilot have, has been very encouraging for us. The automatic public toilet locations, uh, for those ones, we compared the use, which is the number of flushes, prior to placing the attendants at the bathrooms, and then the usage uh, during the program with the attendants staffing the locations. And the average daily use of the toilets nearly doubled for all three sites. So before the pilot program, the automatic public toilets were seeing between 20 and 60 uses per day. And during the pilot, the automatic public toilets have seen between 80 and 110 average uses per day. Uh, for four of the other mobile restroom locations that are currently in operation, we began tracking usage starting at the beginning of the pilot program because obviously there were no toilets at these locations prior to the start of the pilot. Uh, attendants, as well as outreach workers from LASA, have been reaching out to people experiencing homelessness in areas close to the pit stops to let them know uh, about the new restroom that's available to them. And usage has increased incrementally over the total life of the pilot for these four sites. Each location has seen significant daily use, averaging between 40 and 70 uses per day. Uh, the last of our site, which is our new mobile site in Venice, just opened up in July due to the fact that we had to get a coastal permit to operate the site. Um, but we do know in the first week of operations, Venice saw about 40 uses per night, which is great, uh, especially given that this site is only open eight hours a day and the other sites are open 12 hours per day. So it was very impressive usage. Um, and like Raul was mentioning, two of our eight sites have Sharps disposal kiosks that the Bureau of Sanitation installed um, next to the mobile bathroom units. The units were installed in May, and between the months of May and June, 2,300 needles were picked up at just these two kiosks, so we can really see the need there. Uh, we're working on currently installing a third kiosk at one of our sites in downtown Los Angeles. We receive weekly and monthly usage and needle collection reports from our nonprofit partners who are here today. Um, to talk about the workforce development program and any, answer any questions that you might have about workforce development or their experience with the program. So with that, I'll leave it to any questions you all might have. Thank you. Thank you uh, so much. If there are uh, any comments from our community partners, now would be a good time uh, before we go to Mr. Wizar. If not, that's fine too. Oh. Hi, my name is Lena Miller. I'm the executive director of Hunters Point Family from San Francisco. I just wanted to say what an honor it is to be able to provide this service in Los Angeles. I think this program has certain very obvious um, qualities um, and benefits is that people have a dignified way to use the bathroom who are in encampments. Um, I also wanted to make sure that I addressed another thing that we see, we've seen in San Francisco but we're also seeing in Los Angeles in the same way. 
and that is um, oftentimes our monitors, you know, not oftentimes, all the time, part of their job description is cleaning not only the unit, but the area surrounding the unit. And what we've seen has been amazing in that people, um, a lot of the folks in the encampments are asking for brooms and stuff and they're cleaning up their areas. I think where you can see this most noticeably um, is in Alvarado, that whole area has been clean. It's because the folks who live there started cleaning up. The other thing is the safety element. Um, our ambassadors bring a sense of safety and a sense of calm wherever they go. And I'm saying I've seen this consistently in every major area that we've been because we're only in the most impacted areas both in San Francisco and Los Angeles. Um, and just the last thing I want to say is, um, you know, again, coming from San Francisco, I know sometimes um, folks want to see local people, right? And so we partnered with Five Keys. Five Keys is also in San Francisco, so we've had a long history with them, and they have a significant base in Los Angeles. So they really had access to make sure we have um, the same types of population demographics that are staffing these toilets um, that are all Los Angeles residents, and many of whom, particularly in Skid Row in those areas, um, grew up in those areas, know the community, and have outstanding relationships. So. Great. Thank you so much for that. Good afternoon. My name is Edward Jenkins. I'm one of the pit stop ambassadors. I'm currently at the Venice Beach location. We just opened it up. How are you doing? Uh, I'm here to put a face to uh, the ambassadors who actually monitor these units. Okay. A little bit about myself. I grew up here in uh, L.A. County in uh, the city of Compton. I currently reside in South Central Los Angeles, and I've been out of prison for a year now, after doing about 31 years, okay? So it was hard for me finding work. Pit Stop allowed me to not only work and function within this community, it gave me a purpose and a reason, something to go to work for every day. I've come to enjoy my time at work. These people are human beings, okay? Homeless, displaced, whatever name you want to give them, they're still human beings. Some of them have mental problems, without a doubt, okay? And sometimes sidewalk psychology is uh, required. However, they're still people, <laughs> and they need to be humanized as such. Uh, as uh, Lena was saying, they feel a sense of security when they come to these units, especially our female clientele, especially at the Venice Beach location from 10 at night to 6 in the morning. It's very dark, and it's not very hospitable. The current facilities there, they're atrocious, okay? Now, with the implementation of the pit stop, we start seeing a, a better influx of people. They're coming to know us. They're, they're, we're almost like part of the community now. The women, they love it because they don't have to worry about being mugged, being attacked, someone coming in on them, or filthy places to use the restroom. So. They love this thing. As far as the area around it, we clean that place up. We do a good job cleaning that place up. It's not just the toilets, we clean the surrounding areas as well. Okay, and uh, the officers, they come by nightly patrol. I've talked to several of them, and some of them, most of them actually knew what we were about, some didn't. And it was a simple explanation of what we were, what we were doing, and they're great. They have regular patrols that come by all throughout the night, and they keep the peace. The general population around there, since they come to trust us and know us, they are more approachable. We can share the resources with them for housing, for uh, mental stability, for job placement, and not just for them. Pit Stop helps people like me, okay? Because I have a job, I have a future. Because of Pit Stop, I was able to go to Glendale Community College, enroll in there, and I now have a major in communication with a minor in psychology. That's because I have this wonderful job with good pay, good benefits. That was not be possible for me to do if it were not for Pit Stop. So it's a good thing. It's a win-win. It's a win-win for the city. It's a win-win for the homeless community. It's a win-win for those of us who's coming out and really need a foundation to build on. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Wiesar. Wow. 
when for uh, your work on this, I think uh, the results and the preliminary numbers shows that it's been a success. It's a different way of approaching um, the way we've put out public bathrooms in the past. I think the ambassadors have done a wonderful job in uh, allowing individuals to um, uh, have um, some toiletries nearby and uh, have uh, a place um, where um, they can feel comfortable going, and that's been the big difference. I know in Skid Row where we've put these bathrooms in the past, they really haven't, many of them haven't turned out, or some of them haven't turned out into being used as toilets, but for other purposes. And now I think the increase in numbers that we've seen um, speaks to not only the need for more bathrooms in the areas, but also uh, that this is probably the right approach to take. Um, so I, was, I have a few questions for CAO. So we don't, uh, we're, or the report just asking as a recommendation to continue the program, but it doesn't expand it at this point, correct? That's correct. We were, we're requesting to continue the eight locations and to move money from the unappropriated balance um, to the Board of Public Works for that purpose. Okay. And we set aside in the budget some money uh, for bathroom access in this year's homeless budget. Um, and does this, did, did we? I mean, I think we set aside some money in our homeless budget to have additional bathroom access. Is that money available or not? Or does anyone here know about those funds? Um, I do know that the money in the unappropriated balance is specifically for this program. And if there are other bathroom access items in the homeless budget, I would ask Meg Barkley to comment on those Maybe items. Maybe Meg, <laughs> do you know it? Funding for bathrooms in the budget is the, um, specifically for restrooms in the budget, is the estimated amount to continue this program for, okay. for a year past the pilot program. There are some more um, general, there's some more general funds in the unappropriated balance for other types of homeless programs, but it's not specified or, you know, or to continue to support the crisis and bridge housing fund for a little bit more flexible uses. But as far as funding specifically for the bathrooms, that, that was the funding to continue the pit stop program at its current eight sites for one year past the six month pilot. Okay, well thank you. Well thank you, I think, <coughs> excuse me. I think, um, uh, you know, we, we've been clamoring for additional um, bathrooms in the Skidrow area and areas of high concentration of homeless individuals. Uh, but there's been some reluctance because uh, not only has it been uh, expensive to do so, but also because people say, why do it if it, they're not going to be used for the appropriate use? But here I think we're on the right path, and um, we also have some uh, funding that uh, has been allocated acknowledging the need to do that. But I think showing the success, we probably could expand it. So I would like this uh, to, I would like to amend this report to include additional funding from we have set aside in the UB this year for emergency response in the area of Skid Row and other areas of high concentration so that we could provide um, attendance at three additional toilets because they're way underperforming, um, not being used exactly for the intended purpose, and I think this is exactly the type of solution we've been looking for. One is at Fifth and Hill above the Pershing Square Metro Station, which really has been overtaken by a lot of drug dealing, um, and uh, people don't go near the restrooms at all. The other is at Fifth and St. Julian, uh, in front of San Julian Park and on San Pedro between 5th and 6th in front of the Union Rescue Mission. Um, I've added, um, I passed around a, a, mo a proposed written motion um, to approve uh, funding from uh, 420000 from the Homeless Service Program line item in the inappropriate balance to add attendance at the three additional uh, automated public toilets uh, that we've mentioned. And so Hopefully we could move forward with that because this has shown to be something that, that uh, is successful and is working and there's an emergency out there and we've been looking for a solution and I think this is it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rezar. Mr. Price. Uh, <clears throat> thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I too want to thank uh, the, uh, our group, uh, Hunters Point, uh, and, and our other community partners for, uh, for working with the songs. This has been a real, I think, successful program and while we only have one in nine, uh, also an area of high concentration. I think it has been successful, uh, as, as referenced, because of the human element. I've had a chance to uh, go by frequently, as in fact, uh, at, the, 
the site there on uh, 38 and uh, 38 and Grand, and um, it is a uh, it makes a difference when you have individuals there who are welcoming, who are encouraging, and I'm, and I'm, I'm hopeful that we can, um, in addition to the three sites you mentioned, Mr. Wezar, uh, find money for additional uh, sites, especially in high. Uh, high need areas because it is an alternative. It does address a need, and it does show that we are, I think, compassionately uh, trying to address the problem on many fronts. And use of the toilet is certainly just one. It's small, but it's big, and uh, so I'm, I'm excited that. Uh, but t could you tell us a little bit about your experience in San Francisco? Uh, how many um, of sites you're managing, and kind of what that's like in terms of timing? So are up to 23 toilets now in San Francisco. Um, they just added five uh, a few weeks ago. Um, and then Reckon Park is also asking us to do 10 more in the bathrooms and DPW, Department of Public Works in San Francisco is looking to add even more. Um, the hours vary depending on the location of the toilet. In general, we're open 12 hours per day. We're not open anywhere overnight. Also, just because you were talking about the quality of our ambassadors, I do think that this is a very, very, this is part of our secret sauce that I think everyone should know. Um, while we uh, allow anybody to come work for us who kind of passes this, the, the test in terms of emotional intelligence and all that kind of stuff, um, we prioritize former long-term offenders, also known as lifers, because they have the best, the most highly developed um, sense of emotional intelligence, ability to really engage people, to be able to sense danger, not to be, you know, to, to de-escalate things, to be able to talk to everybody. And so I think this, is, this really shows the next level of evolution in services. And quite frankly, a lot of these folks could possibly add to the unhoused population if it were not for these jobs. And in San Francisco, all of them have gone on to full-time uh, full-time unsubsidized work around in at about a year's time we try to start cutting off and that doesn't mean we cut anybody off just say it's a year you got to go but we work through them to, for the entire process so at about a year's time they've kind of got stabilized and um, have gone on other uh, job interviews and go on to the world by their first cars apartments that sort of thing now in San Francisco do you have uh, one or two ambassadors per location it depends. So, so you have the J.C. Decos, which I think you guys are calling APTs at some right. of them. Um, we also, San Francisco, which I highly re recommend in Los Angeles, they got a manufacturer for the, um, for the portable toilets. Um, and so those uh, have two units. They have an ADA accessible unit. They have a regular unit, um, hand washing station, and then a closet in the middle so that the ambassador can keep all their supplies, their backpacks, that sort of thing. And, they, and they're flushable. So I think that helps a lot because out here, particularly because it gets so hot, after a few major uses, they get really kind of smelly. Um, so yeah, it depends on the location. So, but then generally two then, at a minimum there are two or just one? What, what, what do you mean? It, I don't know, it's about half and half. Um, what are you doing down here, for example? Down here, like, so we have three JC Decos down here. Right. I think the rest are mobile, and so typically what I've seen, and Dave can also speak to it, obviously Mr. Jenkins can speak to that, but there's, uh, I think you guys, you guys have the same, an ADA accessible, a hand washing right. station, and a regular one. Yeah. And one also staffed by one ambassador or two ambassadors? That was the question. Um, one at most locations, sometimes they're overtime, and Venice is the only one where I think we've scheduled two because it's, it's pitch black, they're in the pitch black dark, um, and it's overnight, and so we thought for the importance uh, and safety of, the importance of the safety of the monitor that we have too for their safety. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm happy to, to second the motion by, by uh, Councilmember Wezar with a friendly amendment that we see how we can expand that so that fund uh, as many additional locations as possible, uh, not just the three limited uh, that we suggested here today. Thank you so much, Mr. Price. Uh, any other comments? Mr. Bonin? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, first of all, thank you to all the folks from the departments and the agencies who have worked on this. Uh, thank you in particular for uh, uh, 
not resisting when I urged you and pushed to do overnight in Venice. Uh, I, I didn't at first know that I was proposing something brand new, but it just given that there are some bathrooms that are open during the day there, having them open at night seemed to be the missing piece there. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that you did that, uh, and I'm glad to hear that things both here at this table and from what I'm hearing uh, outside this building uh, are going well. And I, I just also wanted to, to thank uh, Mr. Ambassador, Mr. Jenkins. Jenkins, is it? Yes, it is. I, I wanted to thank you. Uh, you, uh, you are a phenomenal spokesperson for this program. Uh, you, uh, your, your presentation nailed it. Uh, you touched on all the things that's important about this. In fact, you touched on things about this that made me feel that this was more successful, successful than, than, than we intended when we started this uh, because of all the, the, the different aspects that, that you brought to your, your, your presentation. Uh, you know, we were looking to do something small but difficult, which was just to, to give somebody literally a pot to piss in. And uh, it's more than that. And you talked about how it is more than that, both for you and for the people who, who, who use the toilets. So I just want to, I want to thank you for that. Uh, I'll be coming down to visit you and, and, and chat down at the site. Excellent. Thank you so much, Mr. Uh, Bonin. And uh, props to Mr. Bonin, who's been fighting for uh, these types of services and the availability of these services broadly uh, for as long as I can remember. Uh, and so to hear them come to fruition uh, and done in such a way that we actually know how many people are using the bathroom on a daily basis and what a difference it makes to have a, a human being there. Again, common sense uh, that's been validated by data. So we truly appreciate all of you being with us here today to make this report. And so we have uh, an amendment before us that's been um, submitted and seconded. Um, if there is uh, no objections, we'll adopt that amendment. And uh, we also have item number six in front of us, which we will adopt uh, hearing no objection. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Uh, number five, and we'll ask uh, sanitation to join us at the center table. Can we read number five into the record? She needs sound. Item number five is a motion and a report from the Bureau of Sanitation relative to providing recreational vehicle waste pumping and dump stations for RVs on the wait list for towing and individuals living in RVs who are enrolled in services for housing placement. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair, uh, Council Members, Adele Hashkhalil, Assistant General Manager for LA Sanitation. Uh, the uh, motion that was introduced by Councilman Bloomfield uh, uh, and uh, Councilman Engelder and uh, uh, the chair of the committee uh, basically looked at RVs and an interesting RV, unsheltered uh, homeless individuals live in RVs and if you look at the latest count from Lhasa, it identifies about 23% of the unsheltered population living in RVs and campers. Uh, LA Sanitation is committed to protecting the public health and the environment. And if, if an RV dumps its sewage and waste on the uh, gutter, in the gutter, that's going to be a public health hazard. And also it's a uh, nuisance to the community, but also it's a public health concern for all of us. So uh, we acknowledge that's something that we need to deal with. So the direction of the, your, your uh, motion and the uh, council is to look at the RV and how we can assist in managing that process uh, while we are building bridges to uh, have people go to shelters and have uh, homeless individuals are in shelters and addressing their issues and, and provide them a place to uh, be housed. Uh, first of all, the first thing we looked at is, is can we uh, provide mobile service? Uh, to the uh, RVs and our staff looked at it and there was a concern, a concern from a safety and also from a public health. Uh, most RVs have their uh, service on the driver's side of, of the uh, 
uh, RV, and so that means the anything has to be done has to be done in the in the uh, uh, street, which can be a hazard to a lot of the workers. Plus, also it provides it's a liability for the city, uh, and also uh, many of the connections are not uh, standard, and that creates an issue. So, as an alternative, what we looked at is can we provide uh, one a voucher system, and the second is can we provide locations for these RVs to uh, uh, find a place to dispose uh, their waste in. Uh, but I want to stress one issue is if an RV is disabled or leaking or uh, is being towed uh, by LAPD or DOT and it's leaking or it's, uh, there's an issue with the sewage on it, sanitation right now is called and we respond and we address it and we remove the waste prior to that RV being moved by LAPD or DOT. So that's being taken care of. Uh, six years ago or so, uh, there was a huge issue with RVs in, in Venice. Uh, I know Councilman Bonin was involved uh, at the time. We identified a location at the Hyperion Water Reclamation Plant and that was opened up for RV uh, disposal. Uh, that was built and we have that available. Uh, we also had a concentration of RVs in the uh, San Pedro area, and uh, we opened one of our yards, the Gaffey Yard, uh, to allow for that to happen. We built a special area to dispose of this RV, and that is in place right now. Uh, looking at this uh, citywide, we believe that we probably should do a pilot to expand this more and move somewhere down towards the mid part of the city and the valley. Uh, and so we looked at adding a location in our north central solid waste yard uh, in Council District 1 um, uh, in, in Lincoln Heights. And that's something that we're going to add with your approval, your concurrence in the Council and Committee. Uh, and then we're looking at something in the San Fernando Valley uh, and working with Councilman Blumenfield's office. We're going to try to see if we can use one of our sanitation yards in Reseda uh, to have that be uh, equipped with the ability to receive uh, RV uh, for disposal. So it's a combination of having four locations uh, provided by the city uh, for the RVs to dispose of their waste plus also coming up with a voucher system. We'll work with the council offices and also the service providers to have those available to be provided to allow the RV uh, owner that is needing that service to use that to go to a private disposal facility. Uh, funding is a concern. Uh, there's no funding for this. However, LA Sanitation has committed to utilizing our sewer construction and maintenance fund in the interim to build the two locations in the Lincoln Heights area and also in Reseda uh, at a cost uh, roughly around uh, $150,000 uh, for construction, uh, $75,000 each. And then we're going to staff it up one day a week uh, and the staffing will be also absorbed uh, with the effort somewhere around the end of the year to reconcile the cost and, and make the uh, sewer construction and maintenance fund whole um, and make it uh, and address uh, this uh, funding. Uh, we're looking at about $26,000 in, in vouchers. We estimate about 20 RVs will use the voucher system. So we're going to contract uh, to get these uh, commercial vouchers to hand out through your offices and also through the uh, service providers. So our recommendation is to uh, uh, move forward with the uh, two locations as an additional expansion and a pilot, uh, and then continue looking citywide. Um, and one of the ideas is looking as, as we build new facilities for sanitation, that that gets integrated into it, so it's not something that's an add-on. We will look into that effort, and then the RV voucher system will uh, allocate $26,000 for uh, the vouchers. Um, uh, with that, uh, I'm, I'm here to answer any of your questions. All right. Uh, if there are any questions or comments, uh, I don't see any. Uh, I will put forward a uh, amending uh, instruction that... Um, ask that we look at uh, one or two additional sites uh, as per the recommendation of sanitation. I'll put that forward as a motion if I can get a second. 
It's been seconded. Um, so uh, I've got a couple uh, public comment cards here. Cecilia Castillo and Rosa Max. Good afternoon, council members. Just here, Cecilia Castillo from Councilmember Bob Blumenfield's office, just to express support for the recommendations for the voucher system and the construction of the two new sites. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Max. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, one minute? Yes. All right. Um, www. Kaboom. Greenzone.la uh, copied the district maps of the uh, green zones that are in question right now. Um, I think there is a way to put trailers with sanitation stations um, behind them of uh, construction toilets. I've been testing it. And there are bids right now of construction companies that are using these toilets on city construction sites and maybe you can cut a deal with them, and at least we can get some people off the street with these heat waves hitting us. Thank you. I appreciate that. Hopefully we can, get, you can get connected with somebody from we're, Tenet. We're testing them in the sanitation. green zones in Silver, Lo Silver Lake right now. We've already done it. Got it. Thank you so much. All right, so uh, we have an amendment uh, before us um, that's up. Uh, hearing no objection, we'll adopt that as well as uh, the item. Number uh, four, we'll adopt that as well, hearing no objection. Um, that uh, brings us uh, to item number uh, four, Englander Cedillo. If we could read that into the record. Item four. Item four is a motion, Englander Cedillo, relative to determining the Los Angeles World Airport's own parcels located at 8300 North Havenhurst Place in North Hills are viable for use as a storage facility for the homeless, including the use of temporary modular offices, storage containers, and our vehicles, which accommodate bins or other containers. Excellent. Thank you. So this is a storage facility in North Hills brought forward by um, Councilmember Englander. If there's uh, no discussion, we'll take that item on consent. Uh, hearing none, that'll be the order. Uh, item number three, um, we will uh, receive and file uh, that one. And then item number two, item number two, if you could read that into the record. Item number two is a motion, Harris Dawson Bonin, relative to evaluating the city owned parcel located on. Um, properties at Saint, South St. Andrew's Place to determine if the parcel is suitable for development as a crisis and bridge housing facility. Excellent. So three parcels in Council District 8. Uh, I have uh, one speaker on this, Juan Acosta. Going once, twice, three times, no Mr. Acosta. Uh, so if we could take this item on consent, hearing no objection, that'll be the order. Item number one. Item number one is a motion, Buscaino Harris Dawson, relative to the evaluation of the following three sites in Cal Council District 15 to be suitable for development as a crisis and bridge housing facility, one on East Imperial Highway, one on Eubanks Avenue, one on North Beacon Street. Also, since the posting of this agenda, Wilmington Neighborhood Council has submitted a community impact statement. Thank you. Is there anybody here uh, representing the Wilmington Neighborhood Council? If you are, you should, uh, can you come, come forward because uh, we give you extended time to speak. You're not going to speak? Okay. Thank you. All right. So, uh, folks, we've got 29 speakers on this. You, you have a minute each. I'm going to ask you all to line up. Um, and so we can get through this um, uh, quickly. It's totally fine to say I concur with the previous speakers and your name and where you live. Uh, if you want to, um, if you don't want to be repetitive and you, and you want to help us uh, get through this. But we want to make sure everybody that uh, showed up 
and is a, has been a part of this hearing uh, gets the opportunity to be recognized. So uh, I'll start off with the first name, Cynthia Zenios. I could be mispronouncing that. I apologize. Adolfo Fermin, Michael Toxtein, Jose Alanis. If you all could come on up, um, and we're eager to hear from you. You can come in any or you don't have to come in the order I called you. Just come on up and get going. You just got to be one of the people that I called. And I called Cynthia, Adolfo, Michael, and Jose. Hello. Um, first, I'd like to say it's an honor and a privilege to speak here today. So if I'm a little nervous, please forgive me. You're doing great. <laughs> oh, God, not anymore. <laughs> okay. Um, it's difficult. Tell for, me your name. My name's Regina Martinez. Regina Martinez, you're not on the list yet. Oh, I've signed up twice. Yeah, but we'll, we'll get to you. Don't oh. worry about it. It's all right. You got a you got a good practice run though. Yes, my name is Cynthia Xenius, and I'm giving my time to my husband. To can't. Speak. Sorry, we can't give time. You have to speak or not speak. Well, I'm against the uh, housing address. Uh, we don't want the homeless at that address. Which one? The. Uh, Eubank. Because there are three right here. Okay, the one in U Wilmington. It's on the Eubank. One, the one in Wilmington. Got yes. it. Thank you so much. Against it. Hello. My name is Adolfo Furman. I'm a business owner in Wilmington. And um, I'm against uh, having whatever is happening here with the homeless in Wilmington. I have ordinance number 185490. I have looked through it. And it doesn't mention anything about having food trucks there, recycling, medical, mental health, handicap non-gender restrooms, family camps, minors, security for community, more officers, more paramedics, more social workers, biometrics, a database, and also immigration status, U.S. citizenship, green card holders, and it's bad for business. Along Avalon Boulevard, we have to be like prisoners on Avalon Boulevard. That's a hassle, you know? And first of all, uh, you should take care of your backyard first. On the way over here, I smell urine. And your bathrooms here, out of seven bathrooms, four didn't work. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Michael Talkstein. I live in Wilmington. And I'm concerned about uh, the problems that already exist in Wilmington and that uh, you moving these folks in, bless your heart, I know they have issues, but uh, it's going to amplify the problems that already exist in Wilmington. We have all kinds of types of pollution, crime, uh, over congestion. You know, we have the harbor. You should appreciate the harbor because it's a cash cow for the city of LA. You should be taking much better care of the city of Wilmington. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jose Alaniz. I'm coming regarding because uh, I'm against this uh, bridge housing, you know, because it's, I'm going to be affected. I live in 1141 Ubank, so I'm pretty much away from. Um, uh, the side of 828 Eubank Avenue, Wilmington. So I totally uh, don't accept this because um, uh, all of my, even my neighbors, you know, around that area, you know, um, uh, we don't approve it because it's gonna. We see a lot of a lot of um, disease. I mean, a lot of needles and all that stuff from homeless, you know, and trash and everything. It's it's nasty, you know. And we don't want this program, this thing, this project. We want to do. In our side, you know, I mean, how come they don't do it in their in their front of their houses? Yeah, it's cool for you guys. I mean, okay, let's do it, you know. But how come they don't do it in front of their yard, you know? I mean, that's the way I see it. Simple as that, you know. I mean, but yeah, like we all Wilmington, you know, we always gotta, you know, do for the home things for the homeless, you know. All of you guys can do their part, you know. That's Thank you. All right, so we have Olga Alanis and Ruth Babic, Lupe Zuniga. Zwiniga, and someone named Leslie. There is, uh, for folks coming up, uh, a couple questions have come up. The, there are team members here from Council District 15 that have frequently asked questions that address some of the things that are brought up. So uh, folks uh, can get that document or talk with people on uh, this side of the room. Come on up. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Olga Lanis. Uh, I don't like the, that purpose that the, the homeless is going to get near to our house. I have grandsons. They're, sometimes they scare them. Sometimes they just cross on, 
in my driveway, really, it's scared for them. And there, uh, sometimes I've found needles and condoms in my front yard there. So please, I wish that not happened to our Wilmington. Thank you. Okay, thank you. My name is Ann Bobick, and I've been a resident of uh, Wilmington for 41 years. Uh, I used to live in San Pedro for 28 years, so I'm a South Bay girl there. Um, I'm not for this uh, encampment there in Eubank. We, I like to have it shut down. Um, environmental, it's not even environmentally fit to have anything like that. Uh, you could see, obviously, here in L.A., I know that you're not turning a, a blind eye, but you have like the Fred Jordan mission thing and people are getting help, but the people are encamped outside. That's just what is going to happen there in Wilmington. They're going to get their little help that they want and then they encamp all the surroundings. You're going to need toilets like what you're trying to get the budget for, which is great. But uh, no, no in Wilmington, it's not fit for the residents of Wilmington. And uh, I wanted to keep it healthy. Thank you. Uh, so we had uh, Lupe and Leslie, Helena Zuvik, Gail Fleury, Jaime Bedoya. Good afternoon, my name is Leslie. Um, I'm against the homeless people that live around my area. I own a property and next to it there's, there's a homeless and we've been trying to leave, make him leave for about two years and he doesn't even stealing our water and our, our power. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, my name is Helena Zuvic and I oppose the uh, property on Eubank for the homeless. I'm opposing for my grandson that will be growing up in the city, and I oppose for the other residents of Wilmington. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Gail Fleury, and I speak for a committee of homeowners, business owners, and residents in the area of San Pedro near 515 Beacon Street. Um, the city has spent a huge amount of money on beautifying the entry into San Pedro. It's where the cruise ships come. We've got the new public market. It would be a total waste to put a homeless shelter on the 515 lot and have it be the very first thing that is seen coming into the new welcome to San Pedro area. Uh, it also impacts the businesses downtown as well as my business. And I speak also for the lady who owns my building who's nearly 90 and cannot be here to speak for herself. Um, people are very angry and upset about this and we would ask respectfully that you take this off the list of recommended places to be considered. Thank you. Uh, my name is Jaime Bedoya. I'm a resident of Wilmington and I'm really opposed to the uh, site on Eubank Avenue. We already have enough problems and I think that the council should take their time and we should find a better place that we can put the homeless and help them. We're not opposed to helping the homeless, but that is in the middle of a neighborhood next to a baseball uh, where our kids play and everything. And, and we're just, you know, a couple of hundred feet from the houses. So we really need to have this place uh, move from that list and find a suitable area that's away from residents' homes and, and uh, playgrounds from our kids. Thank you. All right, Simi Seaman, Mr. and Ms. Seaman, Valerie Contreras, George Zenios. Uh, good evening, council members. Uh, my name is Simi Seaman. I live at 1217 Lagney Avenue in Wilmington, and I'm here to represent Wilmington's Lives Matter and Citizens for a Better Wilmington. I would like to go on record today that we oppose the site at, uh, on Eubank. 
Uh, and I would like to submit over a thousand signatures, sit petitions that I brought today for people that could not come here today to take off of work. I'd like to submit this into our record. A thousand Thank you. Submit. The deputy will take those. Okay. Ready. Also, this particular proposal by our councilman was not brought to the community to have a public input on this. We had to hold our own town hall meeting to have this facility discussed with. Uh, and there we had people, everybody had a loud voice. We don't want it here. It's inappropriate here. You're talking about the site at... Uh, on um, Beacon Street, that's Caltrans. Caltrans told us that there's no way in hell that that's going to go through. They'll take you to court. We talked to the Caltrans people for that. So to me, that was a false pretense. Thank of you bringing so much. Appreciate it. You got to get. You got to let the next person speak. Thank you. Yes. Hi, good afternoon. Thank you, council members, committee members. Can my you name tell me is your Valerie name? Contreras. Valerie, okay, great. Thank I'm you. I'm here to represent my community of Wilmington with my neighborhood watch group. I kindly ask you for my two minutes. I kindly ask you for my two minutes as everybody else who came to the mic, please. Okay. Um, we're here for the citizens by the citizens. Okay? We would like you to listen. Please listen to the residents of Wilmington. The reason why we're predominantly industrial is because you did not give us zoning, because we're connected to the port, who, by the way, dumps on us, okay? It's not suitable for us to live there, and it's not suitable for the homeless to live there, okay? We do not oppose homeless people. As a matter of fact, we have three homeless shelters in Wilmington, a pregnancy shelter. We have many housing, sober living. We feed over 105 meals a day. Our churches provide clothing, Everybody in Wilmington is compassionate to homeless. We oppose this Eubank site. Thank you. Hi, my name is George Exenius. I'm a lifelong uh, resident of Wilmington. I'm getting sick and tired of Wilmington being dumped on. We look like a third world dump. First it's containers, then it's semi-trucks, ch chassis, and everything else we get. We get no service there at all. Now you want to dump these homeless on us. These people back here that love these homeless, put them where they live. Put them up in rolling hills, up there in Palos Verdes. Put them up there. It spread the wealth here a little bit. Why are we always getting dumped on? We get no service at all. And we're sick and tired of these people get dumped. We get dumped on. Now we can get these homeless. And it's right next to John, John Mendes' uh, ballpark. And those guys will be right behind them. Pedophiles, rapists, and everything. Just sitting there be drooling to see those kids out there on those uh, ball fields. We're sick of this crap. We're sick of it dumb. And where's Biscano at? Why is he here? Where's he at? He's probably at a birthday party, an excuse not to be here, not to face all us people. And that's how he is. He took up where Giants Hahn left off. Thank you. That's your time. <laughs> Maria Couch, Regina Martinez, Leslie Orozco, Luis Peseño. And Luis, you'll be our last speaker. I'll start over. Okay. Again, I would like to re kindly request my two minutes. It's a privilege and honor to be here today. I came here today hoping to be able to address my council member. He's not here, and he's always absent. The people in my community do not oppose Can the homeless. Can you stop the time? Uh, Thank you so much. Stop the time. I just want to uh, explain on behalf of uh, our colleague, council member Buscaino. He is not a member of the Homeless and Poverty Committee. When this goes before the, the full council, uh, Mr. Buscaino will be here as he's the mover of the of motion, but it is not customary for members who are not members of a committee to show up. We run into a problem where we might break quorum because if too many of us are in the room at one time, it's against the law. So that's, I just want to say that because a couple people have raised that. You can may, go on. Thank you. May I get my two minutes, please? I'm sorry. Folks, uh, folks have asked for two minutes. Two minutes are for the people who signed up for multiple items. So if you sign up for one item, you get one minute. But some people that we get, took in the beginning, they signed up for five or six items, so they're limited to two minutes. So that's why you're getting one minute and they got two. Okay. So in any event, it's not that we're against the homeless. It's we don't know what we're getting. There's been no community outreach. We, he's, he's, 
He's on vacation. His whole staff was on vacation two weeks ago. We had a petition, and that's what got our attention to get somebody to come talk to us. We don't know the size, the scope. How do we guarantee it's only for a couple years? And then the site itself has problems. It's a methane zone. It's on a fault line. It's by your own count, city council file. It's not fit for habitation or development. We have concerns, as you can see here. We're not unreasonable. We want it done right. He could have taken what could have been a win-win situation and have people supporting him, and now it's an opposition, and it didn't have to be that way. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Maria Couch. I'm a board member of the Central San Pedro Neighborhood Council, but today I'm here as a stakeholder. Um, I completely agree with the members that have already spoken. If this is not against homeless individuals, we have a crisis. We need help. But the fact is that the, our, the, our leaders are not there to talk to us, to let us know. I've gone to a few meetings with uh, working groups for this, the Bridge Home Project, and a lot of the messaging is contradictory. So that also becomes an issue where you hear one thing and then someone else hears something different and it, it doesn't mix. So my recommendation is that you create an MOU wherever the site, if the site is chosen, create an MOU with the surrounding businesses, the church, the school, councilman, mayor's office, and the neighborhood council where the jurisdiction is and outline everything, detail everything. What will make it be, because they've told us, we'll pull the plug if it doesn't work. We'll write it down. What consists of it not working? Come to an agreement of what is wrong when it's wrong and then that way the, the the community knows and the councilman can be held accountable to what is what when it needs to get pulled. Thank, Thank you, you so much. I appreciate that. Good afternoon. My name is Luis Piceno. I'm from Wilmington. I've been uh, in Wilmington for 60 years. And the reason I oppose to this uh, relocating these individuals in Wilmington is because the, uh, the quantity of people that are, trying, that they are trying to relocate. We are a very small community, and we are not against homeless. We would like to help them, but only our Wilmington homeless. I don't see a reason why we have to uh, take care of the people of the, uh, Southern California, of the homeless from Southern California. We understand there is a problem. <clears throat> and again, we have a responsibility but only our, our people, only our homeless. The others, communities should take care of their own. And that's how I feel. I, my house is about two blocks from this site that they are selected. And that's the reason we, uh, not because I'm, I'm the only one, but everybody's against and with me. Finish your sentence. Thank you. All right, um, Ms. Rosa Max. Our final speaker. Hello. So, um, yeah, I, I like to respond to that. Um, it's hard. I, uh, I'm homeless in Silver Lake since last March. I was evicted after a, another screw up in apartment 94. So, I'm a single mother with a four and a five year old and would love to stay in Silver Lake, but uh, we're red zoned out of our green zone. So, we have to come to more welcoming places, and I'm looking into park my RV close to the basketball court so my son can practice his basketball and it's difficult if the city doesn't let richer communities take care of their homelessness because by uh, bucket vetoes everything is vetoed out in the neighborhood councils and then we end up in more welcoming places and maybe with some composting toilets, city farms, vacant lots. Mr. Dawson knows I've been recruiting plenty youth for the city hall and for the neighborhood councils, everybody wants to work and farm. We can figure this out on uh, lower budgets. Thank you so much. All right, uh, questions or comments, colleagues? Uh, hearing none, uh, Mr. Bonin. Uh, just one note, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I wanna make sure the folks from Wilmington understand that they were heard today. Uh, and I just wanted to point out that uh, the council isn't today taking an action to approve anything in Wilmington. Mr. Buscaino's motion is simply asking city... Hold on, hold on. People didn't interrupt when you were speaking, so don't interrupt when Mr. the member's Buscaino's speaking. Mr. Buscaino's motion is asking the city departments to analyze
the potential for three sites. That will get reported back to the council and to the public, and there'll be further discussion. All he's doing today is saying, let's look at these sites. It's the beginning of the conversation. Thank you so much, Mr. Uh, Bonin. Uh, my comment is exactly, uh, exactly, I just want to point out, this is, uh, we heard a lot about Wilmington, but it's one of four sites in the city that are being proposed today. Others have been proposed prior to this, and we expect to uh, propose more. And in each case, the sites have to be analyzed and um, tested to see whether or not this is actually feasible. So if, if some of the things that folks uh, said are correct, that'll come out in the evaluation process. Also, uh, I would just remind everybody that there's a very good FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions, uh, form that the Council of District 15 uh, has produced in English and in Spanish, and it speaks to a lot of the issues that were raised here. Uh, and there will be more opportunity to discuss this uh, matter as we go forward. And so if there is uh, no objection, we'll take this item on consent and uh, send it on to council. And where does that leave us with regards to, today, to today's business? Um, did you do general public comment? We did general public comment in then the beginning. there's no other items. Excellent. No other items. Uh, we're adjourned. Thank you all so much.